just when you thought it was safe to go back and turn on YouTube, <laughs> we're coming at you with more Alaska. And that means... No! Yeah. No! Arctic, you no. excited <laughs> about <laughs> some more Alaska <laughs> videos? <laughs> All right, so the next four videos. And that's it, we promise. And that's it, when we're done with Alaska. <laughs> we're gonna talk about um, our favorites, what we liked, what we didn't like. We're gonna talk about, yeah, costs. Yeah, expenses. What did this trip cost us? Ooh. We're gonna talk about the roads that we took. There were four really bad roads. We're yeah. gonna talk about those, and that'll be in the, the last video. Yeah. But this video today, mm -hmm. We're talking about the itinerary. And why did we go up there and why did we do it the way we did it? But not until after we roll the intro. Are you even excited? move on, walk right Welcome back everyone. So this is our first video on the recap of our Alaska trip. Yeah, we want to talk about the, the details of our, our itinerary and where we went and why we did the things that we did because it certainly didn't make any sense. Yeah, it was intentional. Uh, we went up there because we had certain goals in mind, mm -hmm. but it definitely wasn't efficient was no it, it wasn't <laughs> let, let me tell you how unofficial efficient it was i shall consult the bujo oh no so, the bujo yes so from from alabama to alabama we drove fifteen thousand seven hundred and eighty six miles round trip okay 169 days 96 stops oh man from april 17th to october 6th but not everybody starting nice. from Alabama. That's so true. when we're going to talk, uh, especially in the expenses video, we're going to specifically start from border to border when we crossed over into Canada, yeah. which was on April 27th and then came back down barely by September 29th. So that was yeah. 11,404 miles, totaling 152 days and wow. 81 stops. Wow. 81 stops. 81 stops in 152 days. Man, that's like averaging a little less than two, two. days of stop. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh, man. We yeah. were busy, weren't we? Yes, we were. <laughs> All right, so that means it was a fun trip. It was exhausting. <laughs> Not a relaxing trip. It was a fun trip. Yeah. So why did we do this? Yeah, why did we do this? So. The first time we went up in 2017, mm -hmm. we thought it was a one and done trip. We went, we just kind of hit all the major places. We just did the loop. Yeah, and, and we didn't get into any dirt gravel roads. We didn't see a lot of the outback in the wilderness. Right. Uh, we just wanted to see Alaska. And we a came taste back. Of Alaska. Yeah, we came back, we said, oh, we gotta go again. Yeah. So this time we want mm -hmm. to take a deeper dive. Yes. And that's why we got curiosity. And, and there were some places that you wanted to go that you weren't sure if we could fit Orion. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we think we want to go back to Alaska. Think we're going back. Yeah, but we're going to take Orion. So the primary reason we were going this time mm -hmm. was, besides the scouting for Orion, was wildlife. Yes. She wants to see wildlife. Yeah. So we scheduled this based on mm -hmm. the food chain. Yeah, and you that's salmon. The food. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's salmon. Alaska is built. The foundation is on salmon. <laughs> yeah. you know, and so the wildlife sort of follows how the yeah. salmon goes. And, and we learned that in 2017. And that's not something you're gonna like read in the mile post or anything like that. Yeah. It's we we learned that from experience that we wanted to maximize on wildlife, which meant we're gonna maximize on 
travel days and, and miles as well. Yeah, exactly. That's why we were pushing the envelope, yeah. crossing the border and coming back. Right. And it wasn't just any wildlife. So there right. were some things that we wanted to see, like orcas. Yep. I wanted to see orcas. I wanted to see some musk ox. I wanted to see belugas. Yep. Well, we didn't see belugas. We ate one, but we didn't see one. That's right. And, uh, and there's some other wildlife that, that was on my bucket list that I wanted to see. So oh, yeah. you had to make sure that we were going to hit those places where those animals normally are. That's right. I had to schedule right accordingly. Yeah, because yeah. we missed it last time yeah. by several weeks. Mm -hmm. So this time, that was all part of the scheduling. Yeah. We were backtracking and going in loops sometimes. Right. So not only the wildlife, but then there was also like some, I call them like landscape, land features mm -hmm. that we missed the first time that we wanted to see this time. For example, like some, the glacier hike, that was on oh, my yeah. bucket list. Yep. The Harding Icefield hike, that was on your bucket that list. That was on mine, yeah. definitely not hers. No, it was not, but I wanted to get the pictures of it. Yep. So that was on my bucket list, but yep. not the hike. Yeah, exactly. Um, we wanted to see the the mm -hmm. sun rotate around uh, yeah. on the summer solstice. Yeah, and, and up in the uh, Arctic. Up in the Arctic. <laughs> uh, so uh, it wasn't always and about wildlife. wildlife. And you wanted to dip your toes in the Arctic Ocean. I did. This time, we also wanted to see a boar tide. Yes, that was huge for me because we learned about them last time and yeah. it just wasn't timing. Yeah, this time we went and did all the planning accordingly. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then of course going along the route there was a lot of these roadside attractions that we mm -hmm. wanted to see as well. So as we go through our itinerary of where we went, why we chose those places that we did, um, we'll talk about some of, some of those things. Yep, yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. So let's get into it. So we crossed over at Asoyos, uh -huh. and we did that because that was the earliest place we could cross mm -hmm. because of the different requirements for snow tires. Mm -hmm. So we went up through Asoyos. That also got us across the border early. Yeah, three days and, early. And through a different section of Canada mm -hmm. than we hadn't seen before. Right. So that was really good. But we knew going across that early that... <laughs> we might come into some closures. Right. Uh, Pre-openings, I guess. Pre uh, yeah, they weren't closing. <laughs> they, they were just not opening. That's exactly <laughs> right. So we know that there was uh, one, yeah, what, Paul Lake? Paul Lake, so yeah, our, um, so we got into a Soyos <laughs> and then our first real campground that we, you had planned yeah. was closed. Yeah. But then yeah. the backup was awesome. Yeah, the backup was fantastic. Right. And uh, so you always gotta have a backup, mm -hmm. right? Uh, there was another one in Alaska that we got up to, and it was actually the backup, and it was closed, and that yeah. was Paxson Lake uh, BLM campground. Yeah, and that was the backup to Gersel, which was flooded. Yeah, So, which um, threw us completely. Oh, you were freaking I out. I was freaking out was on that freaking. because it wasn't snow, it was flooded. Yeah. And it was flooded because of the ice and, and the damming ice up the river. Right, yeah. right. So, uh, it was crazy. But yeah, so the timing of it, um, we knew we were going to run into that on the beginning and on the end. Yes. Uh, let me tell you, a lot of the campgrounds are not fully opened at the beginning of May, the first couple of weeks. After the Canadian May long weekend, everything is open. Yeah, um, so that's a better time to go. But yeah. we were willing to take the chance because we wanted to get up there to... Right. spend more time and get into Alaska because we needed to get to our first stop to see the orcas so let's talk about the border crossings we crossed oh, the border yeah. multiple times yeah like seven times mm -hmm. this trip yeah and we we employ what we call uh, our border crossing protocol yeah and whether we're in the big rig or even in class C. So we didn't think yep. we needed it as much in the class C, but we still did it. Yeah. Um, sunglasses off, passports ready. As soon as you pull in, turn off the engine, don't pop the brakes, answer the questions exactly the way they yep. ask. Yep. And don't try to chit chat them in the beginning. No. Because they're all business. No, they are all business. But at the end, sometimes you can tell they'll relax. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be chatty. In the beginning, it's all business. It's all business. Yeah. So a lot of the concerns that they had, I think every border crossing yeah. was... It's pretty I, consistent. Yeah, the, the peas, uh, yeah. poultry, produce, uh, pistols, firearms. Yeah, watch um, your peas, folks. Watch your peas. And um, some new ones were cannabis. Uh, a couple yep. of the borders asked about that. Um, yep, and coming back across the border, they asked mm -hmm. about hides 
and any game meat. Yeah, body parts. Yeah. So, so it's a little different, but the three Ps are pretty consistent. Yes. Yeah. So we had a very good experience with all the border crossings. Oh yeah. This time we also made a conscious decision. We talked about satellite phones mm -hmm. and Garmin InReach mm -hmm. minis for texting via satellite. Yeah. And we said, you know, we've got Starlink. It's supposed to be good up there. Yeah. If something happens, we'll just set it up. We'll mm -hmm. take an extra 10 or 15 minutes. And it doesn't take you that long to set up no, Starlink. No, it really doesn't. It's like two or three minutes. Starlink worked great. Every I mean, time. From, from British Columbia all the way up to the Arctic. <laughs> Arctic, you impressed with that? <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Uh -huh. um, Starlink worked fantastic. Unless we're under a bunch of trees and that only happened like, what, three times? Yeah, really. The other thing we employed was uh, the milepost. We did use that. Mm -hmm. Not as much this time as the first time. Yeah, as a matter of fact- It was helping, helpful on the pre-planning. The pre-planning and so David had ordered the, the new 23 milepost. It never came in and you yeah. were working off of the 21? 20. The 2020. So, yeah, so yeah. it changes some, but not a lot. Not a but lot. it's just good, it's guidelines. Yeah. Oh, and at the end of the video, we're going to let you know if we felt it was worth taking Artemis and the e bikes. We've had some questions, so yeah. stay tuned. So, a surprise on this trip, sort of. A lot of surprises, actually. <laughs> we had quite a few surprises. Right out of the gate was we had uh, one of our viewers get in touch with us and they said well since you're coming through Osoyos mm -hmm. we'd, we'd love to meet you guys and so we said that'd be great mm -hmm. so we did and had a wonderful day oh they took us around showed us the entire area and a of the phenomenal history. dinner yeah uh, at a at really Hubs a harvest host, host location mm -hmm. and we actually stayed there for the night really a neat stop that and that for me set the tone set the stage for the entire trip. Yeah. I mean, that just made the trip, I think. Yeah, it, it started off really nice. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a beautiful area and had a great time, so. And we got to see the cherry blossoms. That that's was, right. That's a bucket list. We want to go to Washington, D.C. Yep. and see the cherry blossoms, but we saw them in Washington instead in Osoyo, so that, yep. that was really cool. Yeah, that was really nice. Mm -hmm. Then we knew going up through there, there was a few other uh, side trips mm -hmm. that we wanted to, mm -hmm. to stop at, Wells Gray, uh, provincial park up there mm -hmm. but it was waterfalls. gorgeous oh my goodness gorgeous and, waterfalls and we really lucked out because the campground you had planned on was closed and then we yep. ended up going to um, the other campground yeah North I, Thompson oh, okay and uh, so yeah we got to go into there oh, and yeah did that for a couple of days and enjoyed that area and then May 1st came so we were legal yep um, to go up to start our trip up That's towards right. the Yale camp took us by Chetwin, which was the uh, wood uh, chainsaw sculptures. Yeah. So, so as we you were really interested. Yeah. In. So as we were going north, we saw all these logging trucks and all is a tremendous amount of logging and forestry. Oh, yeah. That's one neat thing about going up the Alcan is you've got all these little roadside attractions, and we missed quite a bit in 2017. So yep. we wanted to hit the ones that we missed this time around. Yeah, and there's a lot. Uh, these were just some of the top ones that we wanted to see again. It was. It makes for a nice relaxing and enjoyable trip. Yeah. So this time we wanted to do the entire owl camp. Contiguously. That's right. Not skip around and catch it in sections. So yeah. we wanted to start obviously in, in Dawson Creek. Yep, mile zero. And we wanted to finish in Delta Junction, which mm -hmm. is the official end. Yeah, and we, we made several little side trips oh, we did. along the way, but we made sure we, we, we when we left the Alcan, we came right back to where we left At it. At the exact that spot. spot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, layered hot springs uh, is really neat, uh, a gorgeous setting. Yeah, but uh, before that, so yeah. you wanted to go to Muncho Lake. I did. That that was on David's bucket list because we couldn't fit in Orion. That's or right. I in our to other camp big there on the shore. Yeah, but the lake was frozen. So we were solid. still on the shore. So the provincial mm -hmm. parks going up there in British Columbia are really nice. Yeah. The Yukon, once you get up to Watson Lake and the signpost forest, which is another stop. Yeah. Yep. Is the Yukon government campgrounds are really nice. Free firewood. Yes. 
And it's usually trash in a pit toilet. That's right. And we can fit. Orion can fit. Yes. In virtually all of I'm them. I'm trying to think. I don't know if there are any Yukon parks that we can't fit Orion into. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think there are any. Might be some um, tight fits, but generally speaking. Yeah. And yeah. it's not like 100% of the sites, but at least half of the sites yeah. mm -hmm. we could fit and yeah. get into. So uh, really nice. And there's an app that of course <laughs> uh, you get online and uh -huh. you can actually prepay and save a couple of dollars mm -hmm. so that was really nice and also we'd stayed at congdon creek before yep and yeah. we knew we wanted to stay there again yeah and this time we wanted to take a little jog off and go to atlant yeah a little side trip yeah to which is going back down into british columbia mm -hmm. but a gorgeous drive oh it's beautiful, beautiful. absolutely beautiful and i bet it's really pretty when it's not frozen too yeah it was frozen again <laughs> <laughs> but it looked really pretty. And we were going to try to camp there, but that was a place, a big no-no. You said, no, we're not going to camp there. No. So we went up the road and camped at, right on at this rest area, yep. right on this lake. And it was just it gorgeous. Was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Orion wouldn't have fit in that rest area. No, no. <laughs> so we had to do car cross before we got, got back on the Alcan. Yeah. And we saw the desert last time, Wait a minute. we didn't hike on it. I didn't say I wanted to hike on it. <laughs> you just said that. I said I wanted to. <laughs> she tagged along. Yeah, I tagged along. It was fun. It was fun. Beautiful, beautiful views. views. Beautiful, yeah, gorgeous it was views. fun. Then on the way back, yeah, you saw a, a fox. fox, cross fox, which was really pretty. Really nice. Yeah. And that took us into Whitehorse. And we stopped at Whitehorse just to do resupply yep. and laundry. And then there's some tourists. Some, actually, Whitehorse is pretty cool. It's the it's the capital of Yukon. Yep. It's and, got some neat places. And I think when we go back up in Orion, I want to spend a full week in Whitehorse. I think so, I think so there's too. enough to do there that we, we need to spend a week there. I think so. And then, um, so yeah, so then we continued on up. Yep. Cross the border again, mm -hmm. and which means you're going through Destruction Bay. Yes. Yeah. Take it slow, not a big mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then on up, and we actually did finish at Delta Junction. Yes. <laughs> so after the Alcan, then we made a beeline down to the Kenai Peninsula That's so right. we can see the orcas. But that was our way, first big stop. That, we stopped in Anchorage for a couple of days because yep. we just crossed over, purged all the produce, all our peas. We got rid of our peas. Yep. And um, so we need to get some resupply. So we, st we, we dry camped at a really nice campground, Eagle River, River. campground. Yep. It's right outside of Anchorage. Yeah, and yeah. Well, we got really lucky because the <sighs> day we got there, was, was the, the first, first day. day it opened. Yeah, yeah. So that was pretty funny. So things are opening up finally. Yeah. Oh, and uh, so that so was pretty. A few neat. days there, and we had to get CO two. Yeah. For somebody. For the soda machine. Yeah. In Anchorage, and yeah. then from there we headed on down to Seward. Right. For and orcas. On, right. And on the way to Seward, we stopped by Potter's Marsh. Um, last time we were there in seventeen, we saw some moose and a mommy. Yep. And then there's eagles there. So on the way down, we made some time. But huge, huge bucket list item on the way down. And you yeah. had been planning this. And this was for scheduling. Yep. A, a month. Yep. We wanted to see a boar tide. Yes. And we wanted to be there and see it from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. So leaving when we did from Anchorage, we pulled into an overlook. Uh huh. And one of the great, better spots to see the board tie. Yeah. And we saw it. We saw it. Oh my goodness. It was, I was so excited to be able it to was see really that. Neat. So, so you had, you had to do a lot of planning on yep. that one and making sure that we got there on the right day. And then, then from there, then we went down that's right. to Seward. And that's one of those things that the mile post in those publications aren't necessarily going to yeah. tell you, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, on to Seward from there. We saw orcas in yep. Seward. So that was a bucket list item. Great mm -hmm. campsite on Resurrection Bay mm -hmm. and uh, enjoyed that. Yeah. And then from there. To in the nil check at yep. Deep Creek because we wanted to see a couple of things on the bucket list. One, eagles. And we knew yep. there were a lot of eagles at Deep Creek. A lot. A lot. And then we wanted to see the boat launches. Yep, those are just so cool. And we wanted to stay at this campground where we uh -huh. could get both of those uh -huh. items, the boat launches and eagles, because uh -huh. it's right on Cook right Inlet. Right on. And, oh, yeah, Cook Inlet. I think that was one of my favorite sunset oh, pictures. It was just beautiful. so gorgeous to see the whole inlet and the mountains across the way. And that's part of the Aleutia Mountain Range. Yep, It, it was just really gorgeous right there on the beach. So 
that was, I think that's probably one of my favorite campsites. That was one of my favorites. Yeah, that, that was really cool. Yeah. And we got a bonus because there was a moose and a mama that was hanging out there in the marsh. And after that, we headed inland mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. once you get into mid part of June, there's a different run that normally starts and it doesn't start until yeah. July. Because you have the different kinds of salmon that run at different yep. times of the summer. So we knew the salmon run was dried up now yep. and so then we said okay let's let's go inland. Let's go inland. Mm -hmm. And so we headed to uh, towards Denali mm -hmm. National Park. The goal was to get to the Arctic. That's right. Eventually get to the Arctic. Yeah. But we stopped at Talkeetna because mm -hmm. I wanted to do the hurricane train. Yeah. It's a hurricane flag train and the only <laughs> one uh, still in existence and, and it's working. Right, and just so you know, there's no town called Hurricane. You go to Hurricane Gulch, and the reason yeah. they call it Hurricane Gulch is you're a couple of hundred feet. 300 feet. 300 feet above this big spans, and they have hurricane force winds that go through there. That can go through there, yes. that's right. But you still manage to fly the drone over it. No hurricane town. I was no. kind of disappointed. No. But uh, the train was really cool. Right. So after Talkeetna, we headed towards Denali. That's right. Because we wanted to camp inside Denali. Yeah, we couldn't do it last time. We're too big. Yep. So on the way up there, we stopped at a pullout right on the river, which is really pretty. Yep. Near Cantwell. Really nice. And then we kind of queued ourselves up in Riley. It's in Denali National Park, but it's uh, Not, near the entrance. Right. So we, we stayed there for a couple of nights. Yep. And then, um, oh, by the way, reservations. Yeah. Yeah, reservations. Yeah. All right. So reservations in Alaska are so like... So this isn't just Denali. You're going to say D Alaska in general. In general. So for Denali, <laughs> it's crazy. So Denali opens up December 1st mm -hmm. and of the, the year before, and you can make them for the whole year. Like Brooks Lodge, that is 18 months in advance. And the selection of names is by a lottery. Mm -hmm. So then you get put on a wait list if you're not selected. But that's 18 months in advance. Yukon mm -hmm. government campgrounds, first come, first yeah. serve. Then obviously commercial parks uh, are reservations if you think you need them. But be aware that once you get into July in mm -hmm. Alaska, July and August, now you've got, that's the peak season. Mm -hmm. You've also got caravans yes. that go up there. Yes. And these guys are like 15 to 25 units and they'll fill up a campground mm -hmm. or a section very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Alaskans love to camp, so weekends are always busy. Mm -hmm. But a Monday through Thursday uh, so busy. might be open, even right. a Sunday through Thursday. So it really depends on your level of of what you're willing to, to Your risk. risk tolerance. Yeah. yeah. And uh, well, even as like far the as city like, campgrounds. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, sewer. Bad subject. Bad subject. Sewer. So, all the city campgrounds <laughs> are first come, first mm -hmm. serve, right? Except Seward. They changed and now they're reservations. Mm -hmm. But they were pretty easy to get. Back to Denali. <laughs> so, we did Riley Creek. Yep. And then, what was cool with Riley is what I enjoyed is going in every night and seeing all the wildlife. That yep. was neat. And we saw Denali, Denali Mountain every yep. single night that we were that there. Was really that cool. was really neat. And then, going into tech, I think that was my first really panic attack. Um, yeah. And I was really sweating it because we were going to be, for the first time, seven full days, seven nights boondocking with no water, no dump, no nothing. That's right. No facilities in no tech because it's inside Denali Park. Yeah. She was kind of freaking. I was. I just, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Seven days, are we going to be able to make it in Curiosity? Yeah. I'm, I'm used to Orion. I know we can do That's seven right. days in Orion, but this was our first big time in Curiosity. In the end, towards the end of the trip, seven days was like... It was nothing. Cakewalk. Bring it on. So Denali was great. Uh, enjoyed it. Uh, after that, we continued heading inland, or actually towards the coast, yep. the northern coast. Yeah, the way northern coast. The Arctic yeah. coast. So in preparation for that, we stopped in Fairbanks yep, for real quick. part of a day. Three hours. <laughs> That's he part gave of me a day. three hours to do laundry and to go to Walmart right. and get everything ready because we thought we were gonna, it, we thought we were gonna take what two weeks yep. or ten days yep. to go up and back. Uh, so we got everything done, mm -hmm. and then headed up uh, to the Arctic. Um, that was a blast. 
That was. That was fun. Mm -hmm. And got up there and for in time for the summer solstice. Yeah, so that was a bucket list item for me. I yep. wanted to see the summer solstice and I wanted to see a musk ox. Yeah. You wanted to dip your toes in the Arctic. I did. And you did more than that. We both got about knee deep. That's right. So never want to do that again. It was cold. Yeah. But musk ox is really cool because it's the only place mm -hmm. um, in this side of the hemisphere where you're going to be able to see actually wild musk ox. Yeah. So weather is really important in Alaska as far as, you know, planning your trip and paying attention to yeah. the weather. Because um, when we finished the Arctic and we were coming down south, we checked the weather and there was supposed to be a big rainstorm that was coming through and knowing the the road conditions or the, the dirt muddy road conditions yeah. of the Dalton, um, we knew we had to get up and over the pass. So I, I think we were both sweating that one. Yeah, we were, because Attigan is it. very steep, 13% grade muddy, in places, just like muddy, slick. Yeah, just sloppy, hot mess. Yeah, and you've got to go over it to mm -hmm. get off the Dalton. So um, we were sweating that. Yeah. Yeah, so our plans changed slightly. Uh, we wanted to get over that pass, and we did. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing because it dropped about, what, two inches of rain? Yeah, that uh, night. That night, once mm -hmm. we got over that night and the next day. Yeah. So we were very fortunate. Very fortunate. Yeah. We didn't expect to be able to, to dump, fill and dump. Uh, right. On the uh, Dalton Highway. Near the Yukon River at um, uh, Mile uh, 5 Campground. Uh-huh. Oh, that's right, yep. Yeah, kind of a unique situation. The, the dump is normal. It's the filling of water. <laughs> yeah. It literally was trying to fill our water through a mm -hmm. fire hose. <laughs> yeah. We decided at this point in time, we wanted to follow, just like we did the whole Alcan, yep. we wanted to follow the Alaska pipeline from the very beginning in Dead Horse all the way down to Valdez. Oh, yeah. The, the terminus point. That's right. Yeah, we, so we stopped in Fairbanks yep. and got resupplied, did laundry and it's that sort of thing. It's a good town for that. It is. And there's a lot of little touristy stuff like we did the Gold Dredge, the yep. River Boat, Discovery, Discovery and Chena, Chena Hot, Hot Springs. Springs. It was we a lot that. of fun. It was. And we also got more CO2. Yeah, we had to get more <laughs> CO2. <laughs> exactly. And then uh, headed down south towards Valdez and the terminus. Uh huh. But we made a little side trip on the Denali Highway. Yes. Now this is we did this for a couple reasons. Mm -hmm. One was this is the original highway to get to the entrance to Denali National Park. Yeah, this Park. was. Wow. Spectacular. I mean, talk about dry. So it's it's not paved. Well, but, part of it is. But the paved part might as well not be. Um, but it was just amazing to have that 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 introduction to Denali. That's the, the, the appetizer. Oh, yeah. And it was incredible. The and view of the mountain range. The views we had read were supposed to be spectacular. Right, and that's what I was expecting. I was yep. expecting these amazing, phenomenal views. And which, we got them. And we got them, but I was not expecting the wildlife. Oh, I was yeah. not expecting, we saw our first lynx in the wild. We saw a marten yep. in the wild. Um, obviously the moose. Yep. Um, and you eagles. saw river otters. The river otters. I was so excited. The last time we saw river otters Man. was down in Florida. Yeah. And oh my goodness, I was really excited. Um, so we took five days out and back. You know, just one way wasn't good enough for us. We That's had right. to go out and back because remember, we had to finish following the Alaska pipeline. That's right. There's no campgrounds on the Denali Highway. There's these pullouts. Yes. And so I think next time we want to do the pullouts and um, one of our favorite spots to actually overnight was there in McLaren Valley. McLaren Valley. This this amazing overlook. Beautiful. Oh you know what there is a campground. Oh there is, you're right. Because that's where that's where the, the bike bikes fell, fell off. off and hit the Jeep. That's right. That's right. There is a campground. There is a camp so we okay. take that back. <laughs> um, but we didn't stay at any of those because we no. did all the pullouts. Saw the most amazing sunset. Oh yeah, definitely probably in my top three or four beautiful. sunsets for um, for that trip. Oh, but we stopped in Paxton. Oh, that's right. And it was open. And it was open. No <laughs> snow this time. <laughs> Stayed there. That was nice. I'm glad mm -hmm. we did. Um, and then continued on to Valdez, mm -hmm. which was nice. And another uh, stop that we wanted to make, mm -hmm. and that was the Lulu Bell. Yes. And. Otters. Otters. 
Yes, orcas and otters on the Lulu Bell. Oh my. Oh my, <laughs> yeah. So we had been to Valdez before, mm -hmm. and that's how we knew about Lulu Bell and yeah. such. And we stayed at this campground, Eagle's, Eagle's Rest. Rest. Yeah, mm -hmm. we knew the owners. Yeah, they had a fish fry the first night we got there, and yeah. they had uh, the owner had purchased a whole bunch of salmon, fresh caught, I mean, literally straight off the boat, and they, they flayed it and boned it and everything and had a fish fry there, and that was nice. That was really nice. Um, but so when we got there, and then the, the other reason, again, the timing for Valdez, we wanted to be in Valdez at this time, was because we had not seen the salmon go jumping. That's right, and... and there's a fish weir and a hatchery there. Mm -hmm, the Solomon Fish Hatchery. And they return, and uh -huh. we missed that last time. We so, were too early. Yeah, way too early last time. So yeah. we wanted to make sure we hit that, and you did. You nailed it because yep. there was a ton of salmon. They are coming. But what we weren't expecting were to see the sea lions sitting right there yeah. catching the salmon just like bears. Um, was not expecting that Unbelievable. at all. These guys are just yeah. surfing on the... the rapids of the of the um waterfalls that uh -huh. are coming off the mountain mm -hmm. and these guys are just catching salmon just right, right oh, and left it was incredible so it, unbelievable yeah so that was a bucket list item so after valdez <laughs> the trip and the routing gets a little wonky it does makes no sense whatsoever yeah, so one of the things we wanted to do is we want to go to a southeast alaskan community uh -huh. and we picked wrangle mm -hmm. and there was a couple reasons for that and we thought, it'd be great. We'll just catch the ferry, mm -hmm. like out of Whittier. We're gonna be mm -hmm. in that area anyhow. Yeah. Well, through a variety of circumstances, mm -hmm. and namely they can't hire enough crew, mm -hmm. the Mar Alaska Maritime System was not running a cross-gulf ferry. No Whittier to Juneau and to Wrangell mm -hmm. ferry crossing. Forget it, the closest ferry, was in Haines, Alaska. Yeah. That's like about seven, eight hundred miles. Through Destruction Bay and the Alcan. Again. Mm -hmm. So we left Valdez and we said, well, if we gotta do it, we gotta do it. Mm -hmm. And on the way, we stopped in McCarthy because Bucket something list item. you wanted to do. <laughs> we drove the McCarthy Road, worst mm. road in the world. Never do it again. And, um, so my bucket list item was I wanted to hike across, across, not up, hike across yep. a glacier and to photograph a blue pool. Yes. And you accomplished that. I did. Yeah, it's a cool, uh, it's cool thing. It's just gorgeous there. One of our favorite things, and we'll get into that yep. on the next video. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that was also one of our favorite campsites because we had a beaut we're right on the river oh, and we had the gorgeous views of the mountains and the gorgeous. glaciers. And yep. So that, that was a really, that was really neat. nice pit stop. Yeah, that was. Except getting there driving. and leaving was terrible. Awful. But. The destination was fantastic. Yeah, so that's one where the journey is not the destination. It's just <laughs> yeah, that's right. The destination is the destination. Yeah. But going on up to uh, Haines, and we stopped at what we discovered was probably one of our favorite mm -hmm. uh, campsites. They're on Kluwani National Park. Right, which is the sister national park to Wrangell St. Elias. That's it's right. the same national park, just one's Canada, one's Alaska. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we stopped in at Kathleen Lake Campground. Uh -huh. First come, first serve. Mm -hmm. And probably our favorite actual camping spot, or one of them. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. It was just so nice. It was so nice set up. Uh, and free firewood. Free firewood again. Yeah, we love it. And going down into Haines, mm -hmm. the first time we did this in 2017, we didn't understand, you know, people were saying, oh, it's a nice drive. Oh, it's the most beautiful drive in Alaska. We didn't like, get it. Really? Really? Didn't well, get that. Well, this time going down, it was a beautifully clear Sunny day. day. And now we get it. Now we get it. We understand. Yeah. What a phenomenal view. Yeah. That Unbelievable. Was incredible. That yeah. was a gorgeous, gorgeous drive. Just but, blew us away. Mm. Mm -hmm. But we finished it down into uh, Haines, another border crossing, yeah. obviously. No problems. Mm -hmm. And got to Haines. Uh, so that was quick. We were just there, what, one or two nights? Just a couple of nights because we had to catch the ferry to get to Wrangell. No, so again, because the salmon weren't running at the time we'd been in Haines the first time we went, 
the salmon were running again. Yes. So we went over to the fish here where one night that well the one night that we were there. Yep. And we saw the bears there, bear yeah. mama and two cubs. Man, that was so cool. That was really cool. A little unsettling because they are like on the road and right next to the road where we yeah, are. Yeah. And they were coming towards us. It was we had to be very respectful yes. of their space and, yes, and watch very. them. Yeah. But it was kind of fun because they went over and were harassing the uh the, the anglers and trying to get into their gear and stuff. So oh, that was yeah. kind of fun to watch. But, Scattering. But yeah, so that was a, a really neat experience. Yep. And then also on after we came back from Wrangell, um, we just literally, we we didn't even overnight in Haynes. We got off the ferry, but we stopped at the Kershaw Wildlife Center, mm -hmm. um, Wildlife Experience, and that was quite the experience. And I, I've taken some of the best wildlife pictures I've ever taken there, and I'm just real excited about yeah, that. Yeah, that was but neat, very unique. It was. You gotta make reservations. You do. And uh, mm -hmm. it's not open like a to nine to five kind of, kind of a deal. Yeah, it is reservations only. And then. We got on the ferry. Yep, caught the ferry. And we wanted to do the ferry also because uh -huh. we wanted to see the inside passage. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we wanted to- Because we've been thinking to, about doing a cruise, but yes. you know, it's like, uh. We're not sure. Yeah. We arrived in Wrangell. Mm -hmm. And the other reason for Wrangell was we wanted to make sure we saw some bears. Yeah. So the Ann Ann Bear Observatory, mm -hmm. run by the National uh, Park Service, is mm -hmm. uh, really almost second to none. It's oh. right up there. And it yeah. was really cool. Mm -hmm. Wrangell, itself the community was really oh, super nice I the mean, people there are incredible yeah Just it was amazing. unbelievable there's like two campgrounds on the island yeah well we stayed at the city one we stayed at the city one and it was really nice because it was only about five miles from town very bike friendly um oh, we yeah. we i don't i'm trying to think if we ever got we got the jeep out once just to go to the um the potluck, the yeah. Friday night potluck. Yeah, and we drove it in for the tours too. Yeah, and um, but we drove, we rode our bikes everywhere. Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. A lot, a lot of, of fun. fun. It was a blast. Yeah. Uh, so and we were a neat there community. For almost two weeks. Yeah, between the tour schedules and the ferry schedules, yeah. we ended up being there for two weeks. Mm -hmm. But man, that time flew by. It was great. It was. So we got back on the ferry mm -hmm. and back to Haines because mm -hmm. we had to go back to Alaska. Up north. Up north because we weren't done yet. <laughs> no. That means that we had to go back through Destruction Bay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we also stayed at what turned out to be one of our favorite overnight spot a pullout yeah just we called it fox lake yeah and the reason we did is because the first time we were there i was just sitting there at the dinette and this fox just comes trotting on by with a big old squirrel in his mouth and that so it's like oh how cool is that that's right beautiful sunsets gorgeous sunsets yeah, right and by a lake yeah and there's gorgeous. a beaver pond yeah one of our favorite pullouts oh yeah that <laughs> stayed was stayed there nice. twice actually <laughs> yeah yeah actually we did so we did the alcan three times yeah really destruction bay yep so then uh, down back down to the Kenai uh -huh. Peninsula mm -hmm. because I wanted to do my bucket His list. His bucket list. Yeah, which involved hiking, which well, was Harding Icefield. Yeah, and that was a four mile hike one way up four thousand feet. Oh yeah. But that was that was spectacular. That was I, I hate to admit it. I don't know if it was worth it or not, but it was worth it. <laughs> one of my favorite lunch spots, picnic lunch oh, yeah. spots. Yeah, and then we saw Seward on a gorgeous day. Yeah, um, so one thing with the uh, the coastal towns in Alaska is it, it's probably a good idea to plan like a week to 10 days there because 80% of the time it's going to be raining and cold. Yeah. But we, this is our third time to Seward yeah. and we hit it right. It was a gorgeous sunny day. So on a nice day in Seward, mm -hmm. what do we do? We went on a bonus wildlife tour. Oh yeah. And I, it was so amazing just to have the beautiful weather. I would oh, yeah. be fine just driving around the boat, but to see the the, 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 the humpback whales, because we'd seen the orcas, but not the humpbacks. Yep. Well, we did see humpbacks on the, the ferry. Yep. So that was pretty neat. But um, but so that was an extra bonus for me. That was, and, was nice. Uh, <laughs> they got really close to the boat. Too. They did. So that, that was really cool to see that. And of course, the otters. Of course. Um, that was really always. cool. But um, so yeah, we really enjoyed that. But yeah. what was also really neat is um, when we were going down to Seward, we saw two more boar tides that we weren't expecting. That's true. That was really neat. And we spent so, the night there and again, saw them yeah. in the evening and in the morning. Right. So that, that was really cool to be yeah. able to see that. That was neat. Um, we got so, our, our boar tide fill yes, on this trip. Yes, we did. So back up to Anchorage mm -hmm. because that's where we were going to leave for our 
final trip and our yes. tour, and that was to Katmai, Katmai National Park and Brooks Lodge. Mm -hmm. And we booked it out of Anchorage for a couple reasons. Uh, one was to book it through a tour company, mm -hmm. uh, the flight and the lodging at the on the same company, because mm -hmm. we felt that if there were weather delays or and weather issues, we heard issues, that there was always going to be king salmon, king salmon, and, and Bristol Bay. Yeah, they they get socked in with weather. Yeah, quite a bit. And the planes are on visual, so it's uh, easy for yeah. them to get canceled flights. And that's why we did that. You booked the package because yep. a lot of people just fly out of Homer. Yeah, yeah, and uh, separately. But if um, you know, if the flight's canceled. Then you're liable for the hotel. Exactly. We booked it all through one, and our flight did get canceled. Mm -hmm. So they refunded us the flight and the lodging mm -hmm. for that one night. So we got to stay overnight, yep. one night, mm -hmm. and got there early, and that was great. Yeah. Had a great time. And so when we got back, we did our. We were getting ready to do our last trip. Yes. And that's why leaving out of Anchorage was really good. Because we couldn't afford even one day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Website said the border was closing on September 1st. Yeah, and this was for Top of the World Highway. Mm -hmm. And we stopped at the visitor center. For the Yukon. For the Yukon. And talked to the person there who knew a guy, who knew a person <laughs> yeah. at the custom station mm -hmm. up there. So gave them our phone number. They gave us a call back. Mm -hmm. And we found out. September 4th right. was the magic day. Thank goodness. Yeah. So we got back. On September 2nd in the evening. Mm -hmm. So first thing on the 3rd, we're heading out. Right. And we crossed. Within a couple of hours of them closing. Yeah. We, we might have actually been the guy's last customer. So we got to Dawson City mm -hmm. and things were starting to close. Yes. Yeah. So not only the borders closing, we get to Dawson and the campground that we stayed at, which had full hookups. Yep. And they said that the following week, within 10 days, they were shutting their water electric, uh, water and sewer down. Yeah, and we talked to the visitor center for the Northwest Territories uh -huh. where the Dempster Highway goes through. Uh -huh. And they said they were shutting down on the 15th. Yep. And, and some of the other campgrounds had already shut down, and then another one was going to shut down like on the 10th or 11th right. or something. And I'd heard so many bad things about the dumpster. We said, okay, we need 20 days to do the dumpster, 10 up and 10 down. Yep. That means 20 days of boondocking because nothing's going to be open. We had and to prepare for that. We had, yeah, we had to get ready for that. So, you know, and, and to think I was freaking out about seven days. On, Tecla Nika. Yeah. Um, that so, was nothing. Compared that was to nothing, this. exactly. So you were spoiled in tech. I was. <laughs> so we got up on the Dempster, and we were prepared for no dump, no fill. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually found uh, a fill uh, there at Eagle Plains. Eagle Plains. Where we stayed. Going up. Going up. And then uh, the campground had closed when we got to Inuvik, which mm -hmm. is 75 miles from Tuck. Right. You were sweating it when we got to yeah. Inuvik because you didn't know where we were going to stay. But fortunately, we talked to a guy um, at the dump and fill station yep. who worked there. He was the guy that was actually starting to close everything down and winterize and everything. he said, we'll be closing tomorrow. Right. But you should be good. And then we got to Tuck, to Toyak Tuck. And we were like the only ones there camping on the Arctic Ocean. Which was nice. Which was really cool. We were there for three nights. And on our last day... The forklift came in and literally was picking up the porta potties and hauling them off. Yeah, so we knew that when the city it's, starts to remove the toilet facilities, it's, it's time, time to, to go. go. And then when we got down to Dawson City, their their sewer system was already shut down and shut their down. water was shut down, the water spigot, except for at the RV wash station. Yep. Um, but that was it. And then they said, well, you're just going to have to go down to Whitehorse. Yeah, bigger city, should have more available. Mm -hmm. I called, man, they were shutting down they too. They were shutting down too. So this is the risk that you that we knew we were going to take. Yeah, uh, when you we're start right getting up against in, it. Yeah, so when you're getting into the September time frame, you need to plan and be flexible on yeah. potential closings because everyone is getting getting everything winterized. Yeah, and then we just continued to head on south. Right. And uh, we oh. wanted to go through <coughs> Saskatchewan mm -hmm. because... We'd never done it before. We'd never done it before. Mm -hmm. So, at the end of the trip, would you bring the Jeep and the bikes again? I think so. 
Yeah. Um, but so for me, I I learned something about myself. I hate the feeling of not being able to back up. Oh, yeah. And everyone says, oh, well, you can just unhook the Jeep. Well, you know what? When, we, when we're driving along and we see this big, huge bear on the side of the road, and I want to back up about three feet to get a better look at it, and it's only just a few feet from us, yeah. I'm not getting out of the Jeep. Uh, or I'm not getting out of curiosity to unhook the Jeep so we can back up when we're only a few feet from a bear. I don't know why. That'd be good moose. content. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but I think um, we'd bring the bikes and the Jeep again. We would. We used it enough. We did because there was a lot, like when we did uh, Hatcher Pass and we did Chena Hot Springs, we did some day trips. Yep. And especially if you're going to stay in a place, you know, for more than an average of two days, um, you need the Jeep, I think. I think and, so. and the e-bikes, that just really... That was really nice. ...accentuated the experience. Yeah, especially know? McCarthy and Denali. And so Wrangell. Just really, and yeah, Wrangell, yeah. yeah. So I think if you're in a town in Alaska for definitely for a week or more, mm -hmm. so many are bike-friendly mm -hmm. that I think, yeah, uh, you'd be uh, well advised to bring a bike. Yeah. yeah. It just makes it for a fun trip. It does. So it was neat. And mm -hmm. so we continued on and crossed the border and had no issues. Saskatchewan was great. Yeah. Um, we're actually oh, glad. But we actually decided to go down the Cassier. That's right. That's yep. right. That was uh, last yeah. minute. That was a last minute decision as yeah. well. I'm glad we did. Yes. Yeah. That and, was neat. Um, and then when we got down to, to the Jasper area, because we had already done that whole Jasper Banff Calgary from 2017. Yep. That's when we made the decision to just do something different and and go the uh, go the trans the Canada the trans highway. Canada highway right yeah and we're glad we did because mm -hmm. the next day they had snow in Banff oh they did yeah <laughs> so, so we went through Edmonton and Saskatchewan mm -hmm. it was great great mm -hmm. trip and uh, crossed the border with no issues so right just in the nick of time of October first and again that yep. October first because you need mud and snow tires it's it's That's the right. law and uh, it was uh, yeah. Great trip. Everyone's got questions about the details. Oh, the devil's in the details. So obviously we stayed at 82 spots and there's no way we could 82. list every single place that we set on the itinerary. That'd be boring. So next Monday, the Monday after Thanksgiving on our Facebook group, Big Truck, Big Travels, I'm going to post our spreadsheet of... Wow all 82 sites where we stayed yeah. at the campsite the miles that we drove from site to site the um the gps coordinates the state the name the city the campground name the pull out was it boondocking more was information it, than you uh, want to know up was, we'll have all the details about the the full details of the itinerary on our trip yeah and put that on our facebook group uh, -huh. uh big truck big travels mm -hmm. so next week will be our top our favorites favorite excursions and some that we wouldn't do again right yeah. yeah so until next week thanks for watching hit the subscribe button it's free and we enjoyed having you we hope you guys enjoyed coming along with us yeah